Hello, I'm Eve Jackson in Paris, today on Encore. She grew up the daughter of an icon. As a child, she traveled the world with the high priestess of soul from Liberia to Switzerland to France. She returned to the United States to join the Air Force before performing on Broadway and then paid tribute to her mother through singing her songs. Now, she's singing to her own tune. Lisa Simone is here to talk about her album, All Is Well. Lisa, welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. It's good to be here. It's a pleasure to have you. Now, All Is Well is your first personal album, mostly your own songs on here. Why now? Well, I've asked myself that a long time. If it were up to me, the songs would have been out a long time ago. But it's clear that it wasn't time for many reasons. And the time is now and uh, I'm enjoying the ride. And you wrote them 20 years ago, I read? The Child in Me I wrote 20 years ago. That's the eldest of them all. And um, which other one is it? Uh, Take It to the Father is the youngest of them all. I wrote it last year. Okay, well, the title track is called All Is Well. We can listen to that now. Absolutely, enjoy. All is well I keep telling myself When the tears won't as well as the title um, track of the album, which was recorded here in France. Yes. France seems to be quite an important place to you and, and to your mum in your story. For example, in 1987, Chanel used her 59 recording My Baby Just Cares For Me for its international ad campaign. The record then um, became platinum. It was re-released again. In 1991, she sold out the Olympia for a week. Um, she also died here in the south of France in uh, 2003. Now you live here in the south of France. Um, <laughs> the legacy continues. <laughs> How did France become so important to you? That's a question that, um, you know, I can't really answer from my mind, from my heart. When I came here in 2012 to perform at the Paris Jazz Festival, I decided to stay at the last minute for an extra three days and I just fell in love with Paris in a part of my being that uh, was not associated with the pain associated with my mother's death. And I had a deeper understanding as to why she loved it here so much. I went home and put my finger in the air and said, we are moving to France. <laughs> and uh, within 11 months, my husband, my daughter and I came here with two suitcases apiece. And it has been a roller coaster ride. Uh, we've been embraced so wonderfully here. And um, I'm just really happy to call France home. Wow. Um, <laughs> well, one of the tracks on the album is called Child in Me. It's about being, well, the lyrics um, are about being alone as a child while your mother travelled and left you. I mean, journalists write a lot about how difficult it must have been to be the daughter of Nina Simone. I mean, what was your childhood like? Oh, it was many things. But my mom and I, at the end of the day, were mother and daughter, just like every other mother and daughter relationship. We had our ups and our downs, and we had the generation gap and all of that. Um, but uh, much of my education on, was on the road with my mom, and, and she always wanted me to have a home. And so that's what I have now here in France as a result of my mother coming here before me. And... Um, what can I say? I'm her daughter. The legacy continues. And all of my experiences that I had as Nina Simone's daughter are coming into play right now. And I'm happy to carry on as second generation. And she had an incredible um, commitment to music. Do you have the same sort of drive as she did? Or do you kind of, you, you're staying in one place, like with your family? I mean, that's something that she didn't do, is it? No, uh, our paths have been a little bit different. Um, my husband and I have a daughter. My father and mom had a daughter. My father managed my mother. My husband managed me for a while until a few years ago. So it's interesting, the parallels, but yet the, the results in terms of um, relationships 
are one of more happiness and more wholeness. Um, as far as the relationship to music, my mother was a classical pianist. She was a child prodigy who began her journey with music from the time she was four years old. For me, it just came naturally. It's in my blood. It was in the air that I breathed. And so it wasn't so much about pressure uh, or being driven. It was more of an attraction and a relationship that I'm really glad that I rediscovered back in uh, Germany when I was active duty. Well, t tell us a little bit about that, because you didn't <laughs> go, go straight into music no. as a teenager. You actually um, travelled the world with your with your mum, then you came back to the United States and joined the Air Force yes. um, for 11 years. <laughs> tell me about that decision, and what did your mum say? Oh, we'll start with what my mum said. What? <laughs> She was extremely agitated, and understandably so. Um, oh, wow. So many things. Uh, going into the military was not exactly my first decision. I wanted to be a lawyer. I wanted to go to college. I was very good in school. And when the adults got involved in the application process, things kind of went haywire. And I was young, I was rebellious, I was impatient, and I just didn't want to wait anymore. So somehow the military became an option and I must have been desperate because I grabbed it with gusto and I stayed in for 11 years. And um, while I was stationed in Frankfurt, Germany, I realized that I really didn't like my job and that my chances of being successful in it were, would be severely hampered because my heart wasn't in it. So I was 28 years old and I was like, what do I want to be when I grow up? What do I want to do? And I happened to go to a bistro in Frankfurt with a good friend of mine, had a glass of wine and started singing with the gentleman who was singing at the piano. And next thing you know, I found out later, my girlfriend, who owned her own hair salon, was telling everybody. I started getting phone calls asking me if I wanted to be a background singer with this person and that person. And next thing you know, I just started uh, doing my own shows here in Europe. And um, I told my mother that, you know, I think I have found what I want to do with my life. <laughs> and she responded with one word, why? <laughs> and I responded, why not? It makes me happy. It makes other people happy. And I never thought about doing this as a profession. Um, but I do think that I owe it to myself to at least give it a try. And here I am with you now. Yes, right. <laughs> and then you're about to embark on a tour of France. Yes. And of Europe. And um, your mum had a reputation on stage for having quite a sharp tongue um, with the audience. What are you like <laughs> in concert? You know, I think my mother, when I, when I look at the, the logo for theater, you have the happy, sad face. And we are two sides of the same coin. My mother was a direct uh, result of her, of her times, the political and social uh, atmosphere in which she was raised, in which she had to endure, and the messages that she chose to um, share from the stage had a lot to do with the struggles of our people. For me, I stand upon my mother's shoulders and I can be lighter, I can be joyous, and I can share my heart with the audience. So while mommy had a sharp tongue and she demanded silence and she demanded respect, <laughs> for me, uh, I shatter the fourth wall that uh, theater usually puts up. Uh, you have to act like this, the audience is not there. For me, I shatter it from the first moment I walk out on stage and it's a symbiosis. It's a relationship that I build with the audience. And so far, it has happened every single time. And at the end of the evening, everyone is smiling and looking forward to doing it again. You couldn't hope for more, really. No. <laughs> um, I mean, Nina Simone is still such a big part of our lives, even though she's passed away. A film is due out this year. I mean, there's still no date, really, for this like controversial film. I know you've spoken out about the casting of Zoe Zaldana as um, Nina Simone. I mean, tell us a little bit about that. Why, why did you? Well, my mother looked a lot different than Zoe Zaldana, and many of the issues and insecurities and demons that my mother carried are a direct result of the color of her skin and her facial features. She was told she was ugly when she was raised in South Carolina, oh, excuse me, North Carolina, and down in the South. She was not considered beautiful in America, and that was something that uh, she carried with her 
for a long time. And for me, my father was mulatto. So my grandfather, for example, is Dutch. And my features are smaller, my skin is lighter. And depending upon how my mother was feeling or what was going on, sometimes I was persecuted just because of what I looked like. I know what my, how my mother would feel about the casting of Zoe Saldana in her shoes, but I do have something to share with you. There's a documentary coming out on my mother's life in 2015, which I am executive producing, and I'm very proud to share that the first, for the first time, the real story of my mother's journey will be shared with the rest of the world. So that's kind of like my counter to this movie that is coming out, as opposed to continuing to speak on it. Let, let me walk the walk and show you for yourselves. So look forward to seeing that. Okay, Lisa, thank you so much for coming in and speaking to us here on France Vancat. It's been a real pleasure to have you. And I remind you guys at home, Lisa Simone's album is called All Is Well, and Lisa will be on tour around France and Europe over the coming months, and she'll be performing at the New Morning in Paris on the 19th of November. We're going to leave you with the track, A Revolution. Remember our website, we're also on Twitter and Facebook. There's more news coming up on France Vancat after this.